Hi everybody, I'm June Sarpong and I'm delighted to be here with Penguin to introduce our audience to two men who have certainly both made their impact on our world. Today I'm going to be talking to them about their shared belief in young people to bring about positive change in their communities. If you're watching, do follow us on social media at Penguin UK Books and let us know what you're thinking using the hashtag Rashford meets Obama. President Obama was the 44th president of the United States and the first black man to hold that office. He is the author of two previous New York Times best-selling books, Dreams from My Father and The Audacity of Hope, and the recipient of the 2009 Nobel Peace Prize. Last year, he published the first volume of his presidential memoirs, and I have it here, A Promised Land, uh, which was a bestseller around the world, unsurprisingly, and continues to be loved by many readers everywhere. Marcus Rashford, MBE, is not only the wearer of the Manchester United's iconic number 10, but he's also a national British treasure and an England international footballer that has become one of the most influential young men in Britain one of the country's leading activist voices. He spent last year campaigning on child food poverty, raising more than 20 million for the charity Fair Share, and successfully persuading the government to change their policy on free school meals. This year, he announced Marcus's book club to inspire a new generation of readers to discover the joy of reading and is publishing his first book, You Are a Champion, Be the Best You Can Be. It's an absolute pleasure and an honor to be able to facilitate this dialogue between these two great men. So, President Obama, if I may begin with you, welcome, welcome indeed. Thank you so much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. In the preface of your book, A Promised Land, you express faith in the next generation, offering them an invitation to remake the world. Tell us what you mean by that. Well, uh, Look, I, I think that, uh, as I try to make clear in the book, I didn't start off with the thought that I was going to end up being the president of the United States or make policy for my country or globally. Um, you know, and if, if I had had more talent, uh, I would have probably preferred to be a professional athlete uh, <laughs> like Marcus, uh, but I wasn't uh, strong, fast, uh, <laughs> quick enough uh, or gifted enough to for me it was basketball that was my that was my true love yeah but uh, what what I try to make clear in the book is that as I uh, came out of adolescence and became a young man uh, it became more and more clear to me that uh, my own story of being a, a black man of mixed race uh, you know, that had this unusual uh, uh, upbringing uh, and, you know, didn't have a father at home, was raised by a single mother, uh, sometimes in, in, in fairly uh, you know, modest circumstances, that, that, that part of my own coming of age and finding myself uh, had to be tied with something bigger than myself. You know, there were forces around me, whether it was forces of class or race or... Uh, you know, people taking advantage of other people or, or, or uh, a society not caring for its children or uh, how we thought about the environment, that these were all issues that affected me and that I had some responsibility to make my voice heard. And I think that uh, when you look at the history of big social movements and big social change, whether it's the civil rights movement or, uh, you know, decolonization uh, around the world or uh, you know women's suffrage or the environmental movement it's usually young people who initiate this uh, because they can imagine they don't take for granted things have to be as they always were we can imagine something different uh, and you know uh, from what I've read about what Marcus is doing uh, he's taken his own experiences and he's realized well look I've now been blessed. I, I now have the good fortune of, of being uh, uh, this prominent uh, footballer, and people pay attention to what I say. How do I give back? How do I uh, take what I know about living in modest means, not having enough to eat all the time, 
there are kids like that who are feeling that same way. What can I do for them? Uh, and like Marcus, I think uh, you know we all find our own paths to that kind of service. But if enough young people do that, that's how uh, progress gets made. That's how things uh, move forward. And and so uh, my hope is is that when people read the book, they recognize, uh, oh, you know, nobody's destined to be president. Uh, nobody's destined to have an impact. It, it's a matter of you. Uh, taking the risk, taking the chance that maybe you can make a difference. And making the right choices, presumably, as well. Well, well, but part of part of what I uh, point out in the book is, it's not like I always made the right choices. <laughs> yeah, you've been very honest about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, when I, when I was a kid, I was a lot more interested in girls and partying and yeah. basketball than I was in, uh, in, in, in having a social impact. Um, you know, so you, 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 you are constantly learning and finding out what's meaningful and important to you and, and uh, to others and, and, and how, how can you create a, a life that has purpose uh, and has meaning. And, and uh, as, I, as we were talking about before we uh, got, on the, got on the actual program, um, you know, Marcus, I think, is way ahead of where I was at 23. I was still trying to figure it out. <laughs> and way ahead of where I was. I, I was saying to Marcus before we got on the program, I want his mother to also write a book. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Marcus, I'm going to come to you shortly. Um, President Obama, if I may ask you one more question. Um, obviously, uh, in the book, um, I love the story that, that you talk about where you were rummaging uh, through a bin and, at a sort of church sale and, and found a, a bunch of books. And, and that is what began your passion for reading. Obviously, you're known as one of the world's best orators. And, and part of that comes from what reading and books have done to your life. Can you talk more about that as well? Well, you're right. I, I tell a story about uh, going to a, a church uh, rummage sale. Mm. Uh, that's what they call it in the States. I don't know if they use the same phrase. Yeah, we call them like church fates, isn't it, Marcus? It's like a church fate. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it's basically people getting rid of stuff and other people finding a treasure in other people's uh, garbage, right? Yeah. Um, and I just saw this big bin of books. And and I, st I don't know what prompted me, but I started picking them out. And I took a big uh, box full of them home, and they cost five cents each, and, um, and, and started diving in in my free time. Now, I have to confess, though, and I, I hoped I made this clear in the book, my mother had is the one who had planted this love of reading or this impulse towards reading in me. Uh, I think it had gone uh, dormant for a while. Yeah, but didn't she wake you up at like 5 a.m. to yeah, make exactly. you read it? Right. <laughs> um, so, so in that sense, you know, uh, you were mentioning that Marcus's mom uh, you know, deserves to, to write a book as well. I, I think so, so often um, we're, we're fortunate if, if we have parents who, um, inspire that sense of seeking out knowledge and uh, inspiring uh, curiosity. Uh, and, and, you know, parents don't have to themselves be super highly educated to still encourage their children to say this is important. Um, you know, Michelle, my wife, uh, you know, who obviously, you know, went, Ended up becoming a Harvard-educated lawyer, and and you know is uh, I think widely acknowledged as, as is a rock star as, as, a, as a better speaker than me. Uh, the uh, you know her 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 parents didn't finish college, um, but they instilled in her that sense that mm -hmm. entire worlds are possible in books, yeah, yeah. and that uh, you can grow and 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 discover and make connections that you might not otherwise have made just by the simple act of picking up and opening a book. That's how I ended up um, being able to get into college despite not always uh, turning in my homework on time was uh, uh, <laughs> that, that, that curiosity had been planted in me and it, it, it got me through those rockier years uh, uh, until I, I'd grown up a little bit.
Fantastic. So, Marcus, if I may come to you, first of all, can I just say how proud we are of you? I mean, you are a, a national treasure. Like, I'm like, we all just love Marcus. So, it's, you, a, it's a pleasure、uh, to be talking to you today. So, now you came to reading relatively late,、uh, around the age of 17, and, and discovering your passion for books then. Can you talk about how that changed your outlook of life and, and why you now feel this is so important to offer kids? At the opportunity to fall in love with books at an earlier age than even you? Yeah,、um, you know, for me being in, in sports, I just knew that my life could change very, very quickly. And if I wasn't like mature enough or, you know, at a certain level in, in my own head, then it makes stuff like fame and, and bits like that even more difficult to, to cope with. So,、um, yeah, yeah I, I got a book passed to me by a, a psychologist. Um, that was the first book I ever read. And just from them, really, I just started learning that through books, you can, you can grow yourself in whichever way you want.、Um, and for me, as the type of person I am, rather than somebody keep telling me to do this and do that,、uh, books allowed me to just do it my own way.、Um, and I feel like once I, once I learned that about myself, I just never really stopped. I always, I always enjoy reading. and... And it's not necessarily things to do with sports.、Um, it can be to do, with, to do with anything. And as long as I feel like I'm learning and you know, I'm taking my mind somewhere where it's, it's not quite been before, I feel like as a person, I'm, I'm still growing and, and developing. And、um, the main reason why I started you know, passing this message on to, to the younger generation is because I want them to feel the same thing that I felt at, a, at an earlier stage, really, and just give them a head start. in... In whatever it is that they're, they're gonna end up doing.、Um, and yeah, for me, it's, it's a journey that's still ongoing,、um, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it every day and I'm, I'm learning new things. So yeah, I just, I just fell in love with reading from that, really. Fantastic. And I'm impressed you find the time with, with training as well. <laughs> no, but you, you know what? You, you're either training or, or playing games or traveling, but then other than that, you're usually just resting. You know, you, you, your body's. Gets quite tired throughout the, throughout the year.、Um, and yeah, for me, when, you, when your body's tired, it's important to keep mentally ticking over. And yeah,、um, yeah. you know, for me, that- b- books is definitely a way, of, a way of doing that. Brilliant. So, President Obama, you talk about how you came into politics and, and that it's not necessarily the path that you plan to take or even thought you could take.、Um, how do you hope your book will inspire young people to find their way to make positive change? Well,、uh, look, I, I think that、um, what I've seen in this younger generation, and, and I've been traveling around the world for years now, and I made a point during my presidency of always hosting town hall meetings with young people、uh, so that I could hear from them. They could ask me questions、uh, because、uh, that's where the new ideas come from, that's where the energy comes from. And、uh, you know, what's clear is that. Uh, we all have different paths、uh, to, to serve.、Um, and, you know, I think Marcus is a good example of somebody who was passionate about a sport, excelled in it. It gave him a platform, and now he's looking for new challenges alongside with still being、uh, one of the best in his sport.、Uh, and what I tell young people is that. Uh, whatever chosen profession you have, you still have the capacity to give back and make a difference.、Mm. If you want to be a journalist,、uh, there is journalism that、uh, is designed to titillate and to uh, uh, make people passive and ignorant, or there's a journalism that focuses people on. Issues that are important and gives them information and empowers them. If you decide you want to go into business, you have d- decisions to make about is your business going to be one that treats its workers fairly and is environmentally conscious and does right by the community in which you're located?、Uh, or are you exploitative and try to、uh, you know, take advantage of people?、Um, and if you decide to go into Uh, public service. You know, there, you can do that in government, but you can also do it through nonprofit organizations that are feeding the hungry or building housing for folks who don't have it、uh, or working in、uh, countries that、uh, have fewer resources than your own. 
there are a lot of ways to serve. I, I think the thing that I want young people to see reading the book is that even the highest reaches of power, uh, you know, where I'm sitting with world leaders and we're trying to design a program to deal with climate change or to end a war or to, uh, you know, a, a address a, a major world economic crisis, it's still just humans. It's just, it's still just people. Uh, and, and I think so often for many young people, particularly young people who are poor uh, or don't, you know, come from well-connected families or uh, young people of color or women or people of different sexual orientations, so often we feel like outsiders, hmm. not sure we belong at the table in making those decisions. But the fact is, is that the people who are making the decisions, they're not any smarter than you. No. They're, they're, they're not, they're not uh, you know, somehow endowed with some special gifts. Um, they may have had opportunities and exposure to things you did not have, but you can get those. And I wanted young people to see my journey to understand that, uh, you know, they belong in, in those rooms and at those tables where decisions are made as well. And that's part of what I, Marcus, what you were saying about, you know, reading and knowledge as a way of pushing you out of your comfort zone. It's a little bit like training in sport, right? I, you, know, uh, you know, we used to, I don't know if they still use this corny phrase about no pain, no gain, but. <laughs> but they still use it. <laughs> but, you know, uh, if you're training, uh, your body goes through some discomfort hmm. in order to get to that next stage. Yeah. Right? And, and at each stage, I'm assuming of your, uh, of your football career, um, there have been times where you're trying something you haven't done before, that you're uncomfortable, it's not working as well. Your instinct is to fall back on just doing things the same way you always did. But if you, if you don't put yourself through that discomfort and take that risk and that leap of trying something new, then you're not going to get better. Well, the same, the same that applies to sport applies to society and, and, uh, and your influence in it. And, uh, and, and I want all young people to understand it's worth taking that risk because, uh, you know, the world needs you. It does. And I just have to say, President Obama, I, I love how you just so casually dropped, you know, solving climate change, ending a war, <laughs> all in a day's work. <laughs> got to That's what you got to do. But it's, yeah, but it, but it, I, I I wasn't I wasn't doing that at 23. No, that's for sure. <laughs> I was I was just getting started. So I was just getting started. As we all were, apart from you, Marcus, you were right in the flow. Um, so, Marcus, uh, tell us about your new book. Uh, you are a champion, and and what is it that you want young people to take away from it? Um, a lot of it, you know, it is designed for getting books in the hands of kids that otherwise wouldn't be able to. Um, and almost in a sense, just allowing them to dream. Um, I grew up in an, an environment where people almost settled for, for what, they was, what they was given. Um, I was lucky and fortunate enough to have, you know, two, two older brothers that, that just love football. Um, and they made, the, my vision of football when I grew up was that it doesn't matter uh, your color or where you come from, um, you know, your religion. If you if you work hard enough and and you put the the hours in, then you you get what you deserve. Um, and even though I've not experienced it in in other you know elements of life other than sport, I want it to I want the book to be able to push people in the right direction in whatever it is that they want to do. But yeah, al allowing them to dream is is one of the big things. Um, getting it into the hands of kids that otherwise won't be able to to read, um, and also just lessons that apply to to everyone um i don't want the book to be only read by you know people that want to become footballers or um people that grew up in places that i grew up i feel like it's it's got messages in there for for everyone um and yeah it, it, it allows you to take whichever ones apply to you and hopefully it it, it can benefit you in some way whenever the time's right um you know nothing happens overnight um so gradually, the, what, what they learn from the book, it might not happen for three or four years, but 
at least the bot gives them the opportunity to to see these things and um yeah hopefully it it, it definitely helps them in the in the future brilliant so president obama you talked a lot and and also you you cover in the book um your days um as a community organizer in chicago um and and working with people from the community and and empowering them and having them empower you too to make change um how important do you think it is for young people to get involved in their local communities and that be a pathway to creating change well uh, I- not only uh, is it important for them if they're interested in, in making a better world to, to get out in the community, because usually change happens from the bottom up, not from the top down. Um, you know, uh, usually politicians and governments respond to the voices and demands of the population in one way or another. You know, if you want to have influence, you can't do it alone. You know, you have to do it with a team, just like. Uh, on, on the football field. Uh, mm. and, and so you, you create a team by building trust with others who might share your experiences by listening to them, by hearing their stories, finding out how their stories fit with yours, um, uh, you know, creating coalitions between people who on the surface might look different but actually have similar experiences um, and, and just need to get past some of the suspicion that we so often uh, have inherited around race or religion or other uh, issues. Uh, but I think, uh, June, you, you identified something really important. It's good for your soul to yeah. be out in the community and interact mm-hmm. with people who, who aren't just your usual mates and, and family um, to, to hear new voices uh, to understand other people's struggles. Uh, you know, it, reading provides that, uh, but working in communities and forcing yourself to, to uh, hear and work with and listen and get to know people who are not just like you, that makes you stronger. It yeah. enriches your life. It creates new connections in your yeah. mind. Um, and, and I think that, uh, you know, particularly at a time when so much young people's lives are, are on social media and they're just looking at a phone and the world's going on around them and, and everything's curated so that you only see what you want to see. You only hear people that, uh, you know, agree with you or think about the same things you do. You're narrowing your world in a way that uh, I think uh, actually impoverishes your life um, yeah. and and uh, and contributes to division because we don't we don't end up meeting as many diverse sets of ideas uh, as as we could. So I'm, I'm you know I look there, there's room for video games, social media, and and Lord knows I spend a lot of time watching sports. <laughs> Um, but I think it's, but I think that the value of volunteering for an organization, getting involved in a community issue, interacting with people of different generations, you know, not just being with young people at a party all the time, but now you're interacting with older people and middle-aged people and they're passing on their wisdom. Um, that's something that helped me grow, uh, tremendously and, 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 uh, I, I think serves young people well, no matter what they're doing. Indeed. Marcus, now I know that you're still very actively involved with the community that you grew up in. Uh, Why is this important to you in terms of not just giving to the community, but actually being there, proximity being key, as it were? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's vitally important for me. um, But like now speaking about it, it's a bit different because I've been doing it for so long now. Like if I, if I went there now, it would just be normal for people to, yeah, to see Yeah, they're like, oh, that's um, Marcus. <laughs> yeah, like it's just like, a, it's just another day for them. But that's the, that's the environment what I wanted to create. You know, if I, if I walk the street there with my, with my friends, kids feel comfortable to, to come up and speak to me. Um, and I just go back to when I was a kid, I was never like that. Like if there was somebody that, that I seen as, you know, like an idol, 
I'd, I'd always just, I'd watch them and learn from them and I'd use my brain and as, as sort of a sponge and just try and soak up as much as I could. But would I have the confidence to, to go up and like speak to them and ask them questions? Probably not. Um, so I see in, in the younger kids that they are a lot more confident and um, they, they speak a lot more freely. And I just want to, you know, promote that really. And um, I, I think I've, I've said before, um, sort of protecting protecting the next generation. Um, what I mean by that is like, let's let's give them the voice that they actually that they actually have because a lot of the time they do have a voice, but they don't understand how how powerful their their voice is and and how powerful their opinions are. So a lot of the time, I'm just there to to listen, and I always try and make changes and. You know, try and try and do things that 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 my community wants. Um, just just to give them a little push in the right direction. And I, I genuinely feel like if you give someone a, a helping hand um, at a young age, they'll go on to do things that you know even they didn't think or believe that was achievable to accomplish. Um, so for me, it's 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 just setting them off in the right direction and allowing them to go and do things bigger than than what anybody could imagine. Wonderful. That's just brilliant. So final question, uh, President Obama, um, from your time in office and, and all that you've learned on your journey uh, so far, um, what have you got to share that can inspire future leaders um, such as Marcus and some of the young people that he's talked about in his community and those that are coming next? Well, you know, as I said, I, I think a lot of the young people I meet, including Marcus, uh, they're ahead of where I was when I was 23. So uh, they're they're already making changes <laughs> and and uh, uh, you know being positive forces in their communities uh, and in their countries. Uh, I think the the probably the biggest advice that I give because our foundation is the whole purpose of the Obama Foundation is to work with young leaders. Uh, around the world and, and in the United States uh, and encourage their voices and mentor them and give them opportunities to scale up the work uh, that they're already doing. What I constantly try to counsel though is patience. And it's, you know, one of the great things about being young is being impatient. You, you know, you, yes. you, you yes. want to just get stuff done right away. Now, yeah. And, you know, when you start dealing with issues like hunger uh, in, in communities or, uh, you know, conflict uh, in certain countries or big environmental issues uh, like climate change. You know, these are issues that, uh, you know, it takes years, sometimes decades to have a big impact. You can have a, a localized impact and that's important, but I find that sometimes young people get frustrated when changes don't happen overnight. And here in the United States, for example, you know, issues of racial justice, there's enormous impatience to, and, and it's a righteous and, and justifiable impatience with some of the things that they've seen, for example, after the George Floyd murder. Um, and yet I, I try to remind them, you can't, uh, let impatience turn into a, a sense of cynicism, resignation, yeah. or discouragement. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to constantly sustain yourself by knowing, okay, each time I do something positive, uh, even if it's on a small scale, that's making a difference. And it's the accumulation of people doing positive things over time that makes us a little bit better with each sec successive generation. Um, and, and uh, so, so I always tell young people, don't be too hard on yourself if, you know, what, after having done important work, that you don't get 100% of what you were hoping for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, you know, uh, a lot of times progress is two steps forward and one step back. And I try in, in a promised land to, to write about not just my successes, but also shortcomings and failures so that people recognize that it, it's not always a smooth path forward. Not linear. No. It's, it's, it's zigzags, all, but, but you know where you're headed. That's exactly right. To the promised land, hey? That's, that's <laughs> hence the title of the book.
Hence the title of the book. On that note, what can I say? Marcus Rashford, President Obama, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, talking to you both. Thank you for giving up your time for this important conversation. Uh, to everybody out there, we want to hear from you. So please do let us know how you plan to change the world using the hashtag Rashford Meets Obama. I'm June Sarpong. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Marcus, I had a wonderful time. Thank, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Look forward that. to meeting you in person sometime soon. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching this video. You can purchase Barack Obama's book, A Promised Land, and Marcus Rashford's book, You Are a Champion, Be the Best You Can Be, by clicking the link below in the description. For more videos like this, click here to subscribe to the Penguin YouTube channel. Bye.